Hi everyone. Today I'd like to do a couple of things. First of all, I want to do a review on my Grands Forest Brooks Forest Axe. Yes, I know you can pronounce it a couple of different ways, but I'm from the Midwest, so that's the way I'm going to pronounce it. So please don't bother correcting me in the comments because that's the way I do it. Uh, I've had this axe for three or four years. It's by far the favorite axe that I've got for doing woods skills and for doing woodcraft. It's got a two pound head on it. It's got about a 25 inch handle on it. And like I said, I've had it for a number of years. The only problem I ever had with it was my own fault. When I first got it, I kept um, inadvertently missing when I would chop with it. And so I smashed up this part of the handle. So I had this is on its second handle. But aside from that, it's been a great ax. Talk a little bit about the axe, and I'm going to talk a little bit about axe safety and talk a little bit about some of the tips that I learned when I was up in Maine and how to use an axe like this effectively when you're working on splitting firewood. So we'll start out with the axe should always have a sheath because your axe should always be sharp. A dull axe is going to hurt somebody, so make sure that your axe is sharp. Secondly, don't let people borrow your axe because they're going to put divots in the blade. You're going to get aggravated. And also, whatever you do, if you're up in Maine, don't ask someone to borrow their axe. It's kind of like asking them to borrow their wife. You just don't do it. This has a nice sheath on it. You can actually carry this on a belt fairly easily. When you take the sheath off, it's got a nice blade on it. This blade is, is good and sharp. It, when you want to maintain how sharp the blade is, notice I've got my right angle survival tool here. Another use for the sharpener in here is, this is my coarse sharpener. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and when I want to sharpen the axe or take some divots out, all I do is start at one side of the blade and work my way across the other side of the blade. And what I want, and I want to use the same number of strokes on each side of the blade. That's about 12. And then I flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and take my strokes on the other side. Normally I will sharpen this like I sharpen my knives and I'll go 12 on one side, 12 on the other side, 10 on one side, 10 on the other, 8, 6, 4, 2, until I've got a reasonably sharp axe. This is a pretty good edge on it, so all I'm going to do is dress up the edge a little bit and now I maintain the sharpness of my axe. When you're working with an axe, uh, it's always really important to be safe. One of the biggest downsides of an axe is you could hurt yourself really, really fast with an axe. An example would be when you're splitting wood, if I'm splitting and I'm going to swing overhead like this, I would much rather be on my knees because if I miss when I'm on my knees, I try hit the ground, but I'm not going to hit myself. If I'm actually standing up and I swing hard and I miss, that axe follows right through and it's going to take a large chunk out of my leg. That you don't want to do. So anytime that I'm working with an axe, I will, especially when I'm further away from help, I will always work off of my knees. In addition to that, when you swing an axe, you want to swing it properly. Swinging the axe, you don't have both hands at the base and swing like this. What you want to do is this top hand should move. So you come up top hand, will go, hand goes up to the head, and when you come down, you, you swing down like this. So a full speed stroke is going to look like this. It's going to come up, it's going to start here, and that's how you're going to get the power in your swing. Again, you start with it here, you just come up, and you swing. It generates a tremendous amount of power for cutting firewood. Now, what I'm going to do is demonstrate trying to split something that's probably bigger than I'm really going to be able to split comfortably with this axe, but what I want to show you is how you, if I can get this to stand up, okay, how you get the axe through a larger piece. I'm going to back up slightly so I know I've got the right distance here, and when I swing, I'm going to be down on both knees come around. Now, that axe head is pretty well stuck. I really didn't expect to be able to split it. The thing that you don't want to do is don't move the handle back and forth because you'll loosen up the axe head. The easiest way to get this free, either you can just 
hit the piece of wood like this, or what's probably even more effective, and a lot of people don't know this, is take it with the ax head down, and then be right back. I actually, by doing that, I freed the ax head, but I also split that piece of wood off. Remember, when you're trying to free the axe head, probably the easiest way to do it is turn it over and bang that on. One of the biggest mistakes surface. I think a lot of people make, and it's one of the reasons they don't like the axe, is because they try to use the axe for things that it's not extremely good at. You can use this to cut pieces of wood to length, but if you have the ability to bring a saw with you, it makes life a lot easier. One of my favorite saws is this uh, saw Viver, this is the 18 inch version, and just to show you what short work it makes of cutting wood to length, I'm just going to cut a small piece off this. Normally what I would do is I would take the trees that I'm, that I'm going to use that are dry, uh, if their bark is falling off them so much the better, but then I'm just going to use this saw to cut them to length. So length is probably going to be about, you know, 14 to 16 inches. But what I like about this saw is you can use the full length of the throw and it goes through a hardwood very, very quickly. There. Did a nice job cutting this up. Tip, yeah, like I said, I'll cut them into 12 to 16 inch pieces so I can split them easily. Now let's talk about splitting with the axe. I talked a little bit about axe safety, talked a little bit about how to keep the edge on your axe, and so now I want to actually show you how I would uh, split different types of wood with it. If I'm going to split with this axe, I'm not going to split anything bigger than probably three, probably four inches around or four inches across because this is just not going to be a good tool for that. If I'm splitting larger pieces like this, notice I'm going to stay on my knees, put my safety glasses on, and then as I swing, I start with both hands down here, as I come back, hand comes up, and then I come back down when I swing. So I start like this, here, and you can see how much power I generated by swinging it in that manner. Now. I've got the wood split. If I want to split into smaller pieces, trying to balance this and chop it is not going to be a good thing. So what I would do instead is place the axe on top of the wood. Don't ever hit metal to metal, so I'm just going to use a piece of wood here to knock the axe head through, down and through here. and I split it again. Now if I want to split it a third time, because I want really small kindling, or I'm having a hard time getting to dry wood, I do exactly the same thing. Tap it down. And split it. Now what I've done is I've taken that one piece of wood and I've broken it into a bunch of smaller pieces here. And this, I can start to work with in building my fire. But especially if things are really wet out, that's when you may have to split a number of times to get at the dry wood that's on the inside. This is nice dry wood. This is going to burn real well. And so here's it cut in half. Here it's cut into eighths. And then here it is in a quarter. But it's a real nice, safe, easy way to split wood down without risking your fingers. That's what I have for today. That's my Grands Forest Brooks Axe, and um, it's a forest axe. I really like it. It's a great piece of uh, kit, especially for woodcraft. It's got a nice original view to it. Uh, in other words, you know, it looks real traditional. It's uh, got the 25 inch handle, a two pound head. It's got a sheath to keep yourself safe from the sharp blade, 
and to put it in your belt. But in Maine, this is what a lot of the guides carry. And if it's good, for, good enough for them, it's certainly good enough for me. Remember, with the axe, another very handy tool to have is a saw for cutting the bigger stuff. The axe, this axe, this size, is great for cutting stuff that's probably three to four inches in diameter. Anything much bigger than that, you're going to be wasting an awful lot of energy. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something. Have a great day. Be safe. And hey, take your kids camping.